Council regular meeting to order Tuesday, December 20th, 2016 at 12 o'clock. Do we have roll call, Bev? Nelson? Yes. Matt? Yes. Rick Sinkle? Yes. Good child? Yes. Yes. Could we please uh, join me in, in, in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion made and second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I'd uh, like to welcome everyone in the uh, chamber today at our council meeting and uh, the gentleman from the Lamar's Daily Sentinel and particularly you people that are watching uh, over television uh, wherever you may be. Welcome to the uh, meeting. First thing on the meeting today is we have a hearing and uh, it's a sale of real estate. Uh, the hearing offers to purchase property. The council set this as the date and time that council would hold a public hearing to declare property surplus and to consider any or all offers received by 5 p.m. December 13, 2016 for city-owned property located at 31 3rd Avenue Northwest with the following conditions. The city has the right to accept or reject any or all bids Purchasing re purchase requirements, the first one is to demolish within 60 days, or number two, to repair the safe and curt city of Lamar's adopted building code standard within nine months after the s signed Just sales so agreement. Leave a message. Work with to work to excuse Abby. me work with work to begin on or before April 1st, 2017. The summary of offers received are as follows. Actually, offers were distributed under separate cover. The attached bid com uh, is, is, uh, is tabulation is in. And at this time, I'm going to open the hearing and ask if there's any, uh, or any or written oral objections or comments to the proposal. At this time, the hearing is open. Is there any written or oral comments? Uh, to this proposal. I will state once again, are there any written or oral comments to the proposal on this product? Well, this is Joe. Hi, Joe. If Somebody not, I declare me. the hearing closed. Hi. Um, the staff recommends a selling to the higher bidder. The financial impact of the city would see future tax revenues from the party. Any questions from the... Uh, what, what is the anticipated uh, signing date? When would, when would the nine months kick in? Um, I thought we said when we accepted the contract. First or April 1st, I think. Well, this one says after the signed sales agreement. I thought it was when we signed the agreement. Right. And when that's when the date starts. Correct. Right. And when do we anticipate that? Like, well, quickly? Oh, it says on or before April 1st. Well, they have to start work on so, it before I mean, April 1st. There, we've got to bring up abstracts and stuff on it. And sure, sure. Right. That is your question, John? Yep. Any other questions? I entertain a motion. You want me to read the bids? <coughs> let, me, let me read the bids to you that came in. Um, Jerome and Eileen uh, Dreckman, it was uh, for a de demolition. The lump sum of the price was $2,000 for the lot. Uh, the second was Joe Gallus and Gallus Construction Incorporated. And uh, that was a renovation project. And the lump sum on that was $5,001. <coughs> and the uh, third one was Marcia Forlessing Stenwall, uh, Sioux City, Iowa, for $5,000. And that was on a renovation project. And the last one was uh, Langle Engineering and Development Corporation for renovation for $12,001. <coughs> Questions? Motion approving resolution 16-43, declaring surplus property, authorizing sale of property at 31 3rd Avenue Northwest, subject to Lango Engineering Development, LLC, the Mars Iowa, $12,001 and no cents. Is there a second? I'll second. 
Motion made and second, adopting resolution number 16-43, declaring property surplus and authorizing the sale of property at 31 3rd Avenue Northwest, subject to Langle Engineering and Development, LLC, for $12,001. We have roll call, Bev. Goodchild? Yep. Wick? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Knapp? Yes. Rexinkle? Yes. Motion passed. Guess we're done with you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okay, the second item is the general discussion. Uh, and uh, the way we handle our general discussion is we ask uh, anybody that's got any concerns or comments uh, to step up to the uh, microphone, state their name and address, and uh, the council cannot make any commitments today, but they're always willing to listen to what you have uh, to <coughs> offer. And uh, so at this time, uh, I'd ask anybody from the audience uh, or the chamber if they've got any concerns on general discussion. I will ask once again, hearing none, we'll move to uh, <coughs> the CIP uh, year in review. And uh, Scott, I believe you want to share that? Yes, I would. <coughs> you have before you a... Uh, Four page, three page document entitled 2016 CIP Review. And I was also able to accomplish the 2017 CIP list. So those would be the projects that we are anticipating for uh, this coming year. Uh, first, go, I'm going to go through both, but I'll start with the 2016. These projects are uh, essentially accomplished with a few minor exceptions. The industrial road got graded and granular so that uh, Dave Shipper got in touch with us that the uh, State Fire Marshal Office really wanted a secondary access to the Plymouth Energy uh, transload, so we were able to get that opened up and graded. 14th Avenue East for Rick and Knight got accomplished. 12th Street by Fire Station Number 2 is completed. 1st Avenue Southeast, the paving and the retaining wall is completed by Fire Station Number 2. 17th and uh, Central Avenue intersection got uh, almost two-thirds of that removed and replaced. Plymouth Street and Central Avenue right downtown here got removed and replaced. First Street and First Avenue over by the North Ice Cream Plant, that full intersection got removed and replaced. City Hall parking lot had some paving adjacent to the interface between the asphalt and the concrete that was raveling and we got that removed and replaced. The alley at the ice cream parlor was removed and replaced. Uh, under asphalt uh, overlay on streets, we did some patchwork on Mahogany, numerous patchwork on Central Avenue, numerous patchwork on Plymouth, or excuse me, Business 75, various and variety of patchwork around uh, other parts of the community. We did an alley over there by uh, Mrs. Staver's property on 6th Street Southwest. Also on Bev's Alley, we uh, overlaid that uh, alley between 5th and 6th. We did some drainage patchwork with some asphalt uh, in southwest Lamar's that was holding water. We did uh, a little jag up on uh, 6th Street Northeast by the railroad tracks. And we did 23 blocks of overlay. Uh, 23 separate full blocks of overlay were accomplished. 18th Street rail gates are up. 12th Street rail gates are up. We had that conflict with the signalization at 12th Street, and we got that relocated. We did the design on Park Lane, white topping. Did the design on Dogwood paving. Design on Crescent Ridge paving. And the design on Business 75, white top. On the second page, under public facilities, the accomplishments for 2016. Schaefer Park got cleaned up and improvements made. We put mulch and new rock on the paths. Cleveland Castle got cleaned up, mulched, and repaired. Uh, we assisted Rejoice Community Church with building a baseball field so that the travel team would have a baseball uh, area that they could use and practice on. The library improvements included the uh, front door, uh, handicap ramps, uh, the back door, 
and some landscaping improvements. The golf course sign got put up with all the uh, lighting associated with that. Time out. Lights at the library too. Uh, that's under um, energy efficiency. Oh, gotcha. Okay, good enough. I just uh, the, let's see, the Municipal Park uh, box culvert head wall, if you recall, got hit by a drunk. And um, no. so, so we repaired that box culvert, just missed the, the culvert, and replaced the head wall. And so that got accomplished. The uh, ACC, the asphalt overlay at the various public facilities, included um, the balance of the Memorial Cemetery roads. So 100% of the roads within the Memorial Cemetery are now got asphalt surfacing. Uh, park Lane got overlaid in anticipation of the Park Lane over uh, the white topping. Uh, the lower parking lot of golf course got repaved. Library back parking lot got repaved. The city parking lot along with the uh, Murphy parking lot got repaved. And then the municipal park building, that storage building out there, had a dirt floor and we put an asphalt floor in it. Energy efficiency wise, we, we converted a lot of uh, incandescent lighting and other uh, fluorescent lighting to LED. And it includes at the uh, Community Wellness Center, here at City Hall, the library as Clark just mentioned, uh, numerous street lights, um, several of your signal lights, that's the traffic signals I'm talking about, and then a variety of miscellaneous changes have been made. For example, some of our pop machines now have a sensor on it for occupancy, so the thing goes dormant if it's not being used over an extended weekend, etc. Under the CSS, that's the CSS building that we used to own, uh, we did the partial demolition. We designed it as the Lamar's Police Department, uh, only to uh, turn around and the last bullet is we sold it. Uh, we relocated the gas and electric. We relocated the sewer and water. We abated all of the asbestos off of that building. We removed the metal building to Lamar's Little League, and we salvaged the Duralast so that we could put it on your public works building. So that's in inventory right now, awaiting uh, January 1st or thereabouts to put a, a new roof on the public works building. That's the old building I'm talking about. <clears throat> At the airport, we did a $125,000 renovation to the terminal that was assisted on a 50-50 basis with Wells Dairy. Also on a 50-50 basis with Dairy, Wells Dairy, we did a $25,000 improvement to the signage out there. The environmental assessment, as you've seen, uh, is accomplished by Bolton and Mink. That was about a $75,000 proposition, and it's accomplished and it's out for public hearing right now. So the document is complete. We needed that done so that we could do the runway extension. The hangar pad for Pat Feenstra has been constructed. Sewer was brought in, water was brought in. We eliminated the septic tank and we put in a new lift station for not only that site, but also the terminal. The electrical panel was 30-some uh, years old and it was showing distress, so we replaced the electrical panel out there as well. Under the Community Betterment Program, we uh, dredged the North Pond, we filled the South Pond, we did the parking at the Postal Playhouse, we cleaned up the BMX track area, and we did numerous improvements to the park building up at the uh, Municipal Park. We painted it, we put new overhead doors, we put gutters, we put a concrete floor in it, and we put, uh, excuse me, an asphalt floor, and we put concrete approaches. The big success for 2013 under public facilities, we're successful at just under $5 million fundraising under uh, the Lamar's Area Betterment Foundation, as you know. Recently, we were uh, awarded $450,000 of CAD grant, and previously in January, you knew that we were awarded 360,000 of TAP funds for the South Trail. So as you can see by those numbers, and there's some ancillary grants that we've applied for and received. So we're just bucking $6 million at this point. So we're well on our way to accomplishing the CBP. Under utility and development on the third page, we did all three uh, utilities in the dogwood um, uh, second edition, that includes sanitary sewer, water main, and storm sewer. 
We did the same thing on all three at Crescent Ridge. We did all same three at uh, KNS second edition, and those are 100% finalized. The other two have just punch list items. In the Lamarsis Industrial Park, we built a retaining wall for Paul Gangler because the uh, rail encroached too uh, closely onto his property, and so we got that accomplished. Plymouth Energy Transload is now functional, and I'm happy to report, and I'm sure Dick is too, they have the site full of ethanol. The train cars are full. Shipments went out last week, and they're going to continue to go out. They're going to Chicago. Uh, the borrow site at the uh, industrial park got final graded. Two detention basins in that industrial park got cleaned out. The industrial road grading and resurfacing, as I mentioned earlier, got accomplished. Uh, KNS is now on their third edition. The design is complete and grading is done. <coughs> NORAM moved 44,000 cubic yards of uh, soil from our industrial park to uh, the NORAM new eight, $20 million facility, and 100% of that is accomplished. Uh, in the Lamar's Business Park, we found out that the uh, south eight lots were too low based on the uh, city floodplain. So we brought that fill up so that a LOMA could be sent into FEMA in order to uh, get it uh, a map amendment and take it out of the floodplain. So that got accomplished. Uh, the Schuster Borrow site that we had operated with, uh, first of all, the school, and secondly, Steve Schuster, uh, got finalized, got cleaned up to the satisfaction of both the city and Steve Schuster. Under water main extensions, we accomplished about half of the first one, Business 75 Southwest and South uh, Northeast. Uh, business 75 uh, South by Mr. Pease, uh, basically down to the CSS building got accomplished. Um, business 75 South from Dairy Queen, then down to Mr. Pease, that got accomplished very late here, right before the winter set in. 18th Street at Lincoln, we've got the permits, we've got the design, we've got it bid, Vanderbilt's doing it, however, it's not done. Iowa Highway 3 West to Lake Avenue got accomplished so that the uh, Grun Guntern family could get connected to city water. Iowa Highway 3 by Floyd River, the Floyd River is crossed, we went underneath it, and about half of that project is completed. Uh, the multiple question marks, I'm not sure how that got slid in there. That was supposed to be Plymouth and Central intersection had some water uh, main improvements before we put that new uh, diamond in. 12th Street Sanitary Sewer Extension did occur on 12th Street, and uh, Steve Hunter, I'm happy to report, is connected to our sanitary sewer system. Uh, Steve Hunter lives on the acreage that Harry Kinkle all on. Yes. Uh, big year. I kind of quoted earlier that there might be a hundred on that list. I think there's about 87. Uh, next, I'd like to go through the 2017 CIP very, very quickly. Uh, under Public Works, uh, as you all know, we're out for bids on Business 75 White Top and we're out for bids on 200 Street Paving. That's by Crescent Ridge. Uh, we hope to uh, get bids for the Park Lane White Top, 9th Street Southwest White Top, and 6th Avenue Southwest White Top. Uh, I am proposing you today to uh, pave the balance of industrial road in the Lamar's Industrial Park. I'm also proposing to you today to pave 24th Street from uh, essentially Bodine's Cone Factory to 6th Avenue, also known as Lynx. And we have all of the right-of-way? All the right-of-way is done, and in years past, like five years ago, we graded it and put the storm sewer in, and it's, a, it's kind of a weedy, uh, somewhat unmaintained, gravelly surface. <coughs> Drive at your own risk. Uh, thank you. Drive at your own risk. <laughs> Um, I that think basically goes up to the water tower? Yeah. Yes. Past it. Yeah. Past it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, the five-way intersection modification, we've been talking about it for years, and I want to get that accomplished in 2017. That's a Dairy Queen corner. Is, is that something that needs to be done before the white topping? Uh, we'll see how that all transpired. I hope to get that accomplished. 
Are, are we thinking eliminating one, or is that not in the mix? We are thinking that. I hate to prejudge it, but it would be based on a traffic engineering study called a TEEP, and the state will assist with a freebie consultant time of 100 hours. Did, did one ever get done there, Scott? Because, I mean, when no. Delano was up here, we talked about a team mm -hmm. study on that corner. Yeah. When hy V was in the mix and all You're that. You're absolutely right, Clark, and that, that's one that fell between the cracks. Okay. okay. Probably okay. when I got ill. And right. But I just didn't, didn't get accomplished. Don't want to see it alter our white top in timing, yet I'd hate to. It's only 100 hours, so as you know, a consultant could do that in two, two weeks, weeks' time. Two weeks. And so I hope to... Uh, Get the TEEP study accomplished before we actually pull the trigger this spring on the white top. Okay, all right. And uh, a five-legged intersection is just a, uh, a poor design, no matter how you look at it. But the angles there are poor design, period. So. And then the skewed intersection is also a poor so design. It could be. Yeah. So, uh, without prejudging it, I don't know. Some some significant modification should be done at that all right, intersection. All right, all right. The study going to be for more than just that intersection? Was it going to be for the all the 75 from third? Uh, from well, we were going to dovetail it into the thought of uh, do we really need four lanes versus three, three lanes, lanes versus right. five lanes? Right, we did talk about that. Yeah. But I think we're pretty well decided on the four lanes. Keep what we uh, have. You have previously decided let's stay with four <coughs> lanes. Now. That's prejudging the TEEP study, but yeah. okay. uh, you earlier about a month or a month and a half ago, you approved the Anthony Becker Alley pavement. Uh, we also aspire to uh, pave the alley by the Postal Playhouse to connect that new parking lot. Um, there's also the downtown alley paving alley uh, paving that's needed to um, rehabilitate the uh, alleys uh, just a half a block west of Central. Uh, I'm going to propose that we consider uh, paving the balance of the alley by the Iowa State Bank, and more on that to come, but I've got it on the list. We want to finish Dogwood second edition because 35 lots are at stake there. I talked to Steve Schuster this morning, and uh, he's first on the docket with Bainbridge to get that paved. With all the utilities in, if he's got the paving ready to go, we should be in good shape. Crescent Ridge is the same way. If we bid that uh, very soon here in January, I don't see any problem with finishing Crescent Ridge fully and completely. Uh, K&S, in talking to the three proprietors there, they have full intent to uh, finish their third edition this coming year. And then finally, we've got a lot of Neils in the back of the room. We've got a lot of movement on Lamar's Business Park, both first edition as well as second edition. I told you about the Loma that's going into FEMA. Um, we just really need to get on with that. There's eight lots there, and he's got, uh, I think Neil could tell you, he's got interest in almost every one of the eight. And we're going to have a special meeting tomorrow morning to address some of those. Second page, utilities. <coughs> um, the water main projects that are listed at the top is, a, is an echo from uh, what I've already stated. So uh, Vanderpool has the first one has the second one, has the third one, uh, the fourth one is on your water department's radar, and then uh, Mauser Excavating is going to do the fifth one. So you've heard about all those. We want to get those accomplished in 2017. There's a storm sewer problem at Adler Park that we'd like to fix. Uh, Jim Helms lives next to 12th Street Southeast Box Culvert. He would like to see improvements, and I've looked at it, and he's absolutely right, we need to do something. Uh, Dean Foods lives right, or, uh, operates right next to 12th Street Southwest, and that box culvert needs some improvements right there and some protection like a guardrail. 18th Street Ditch got partially fixed by Vanderpool here two years ago, and I think we got to finish the job. Uh, we met with uh, L&L &L Builders and the, and the uh, owner of McDonald's. All of you know that McDonald's is going through a major renovation, and they are aspiring that the city um, finally pulled the trigger on something that you did authorize two years ago, I believe, Dick, uh, to put in that box culvert right there by McDonald's and get rid of that ugly head wall. And so we intend to get that accomplished. Uh, Second uh, Avenue Northeast Storm Sewer, what that is, it goes by uh, 
uh, Wilchin and Livermore and the Ready Mix plant, and it's a too small a storm sewer, so the intersections of uh, 4th and 2nd, 2nd um, and 6th, all get flooded every time it rains. The storm sewer is too small, can't handle the water, the intersections back up, and now the property owners on the north side of 6th are complaining because the water not only backs up in the intersections, but flows between their houses. So we're going to get that repaired. There's a lot of down uh, timber in our rivers. We're going to do some clearing and grubbing this winter. And then finally, we're going to do some clearing and grubbing in the various detention basins that have volunteer trees. Third paid public facilities. We want to remove, relocate the AWOS at the <coughs> airport. We want to uh, build a relocation of the taxiway. That's from the apron to the runway straight west of the terminal is what I'm talking about. And the airport committee, uh, uh, Ken, John, and uh, Dick and I approved that just the other morning last week. Uh, runway extension, we've got on the radar a boatman make to design that. And we have the funds coming down through the entitlement program in FY18 and FY19, those are federal fiscal years, uh, to accomplish that for us. Some of that will be local because the FAA will only extend 150 feet and we aspire to ex extend it about 450 in order to achieve 5,000 feet. Uh, the hangar for Feimstra, we we're all set, the city is. So we got sewer, we got water, we got the pad in and uh, we've got the design approved and so Pat Feimstra needs to pull the trigger come April 1 is what he promised. And we'll continue to investigate hangar rentals also, right? Hangers for rental. Uh, we're also going to invest, thank you, John, we're also yeah. going to investigate uh, city-owned hangars right. that would be constructed that we would rent out just like we do all the balance of them. Well, Lamar's Little League is uh, looking for some sidewalk extension along the peewee fields, and we kind of promised that a couple of years ago and never accomplished it. They did what they promised to do, so we need to pull the trigger and get ours done. They also wanted some uh, drainage improvements because that uh, stormwater does back up on that property and the property to the east. So we need to take a hard look at that and see what needs to be done. Uh, Jason and Dick are, are preparing plans for the banquet hall uh, modifications. That's that outdoor service area that would be modified to make things better out there. The current building renovation on the library, you're gonna hear in the course of this agenda uh, from uh, Toy Sullivan and surely relative to their proposition. Uh, Postal Playhouse addition, uh, 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 Dana Schuster and that group is aspiring to add an addition to uh, their building on the north side. So when we did that parking lot, if you've driven through there, there's kind of a gravelly area off to the north there that we reserve for that addition. Uh, Lamar's PD is two years out, but uh, we're already engaging CMBA to do the design of the renovation of that existing building to turn it into a police station. So we want to continue with that. We do need some improvements at the uh, movie theater, second story windows, the HVAC system, the lower level and the second story all need improvements. And then I'm also going to propose to you today that we continue with Franklin Energy and their contract so that we can continue with the uh, energy improvements in uh, 2017. Fourth page is the Community Betterment Program. With the green light of CAT, the green light from uh, TAP, uh, approaching our target of $5 million, I see nothing but a green light unless you put a break on that. And it's up to you. You can put the brakes on the CBP if you would like. I, my proposal to you is let's go full steam ahead in 2017 and get as many of the Community Betterment Program projects accomplished as we can. Um, the CAT grant will carry with it a three-year contract, although the email that was sent out was a little confusing. Uh, they had told Jason and I when we were in Des Moines three years. They put in the email two years, so we'll have to work that out. But anyway, we will have a deadline. So in order to take advantage of 450000 we need to put our foot forward on the balance that's included in that app. And what's included is the Municipal Park, Olson, Skip Dog Park, Skip BMX, Skate Park, and Wellness Center. Those are in. 
uh, the three rec trails are not. And so what I've got on this list, uh, you see for, I won't repeat all those, you've heard it numerous times, those are the ones that I hope to pull the trigger on. Again, unless you put the brakes on that. Fifth page is a list um, you've all uh, been following the political scene, I'm sure. Uh, Trump is proposing at this point, uh, in his first 100 days of his administration, he wants to allocate $1 trillion for infrastructure, uh, shovel-ready infrastructure. Uh, what does that mean? I have not a bloody clue. <laughs> On the other hand, I want to propose to you that we hire the necessary consultants now, immediately, we get what I've got on that fifth page, get 100% of that design with plans, specifications, cost estimates, have it on the shelf, hopefully not collecting dust, but on the shelf, ready to go. And if Trump does what the lip service is, $1 trillion, we'll see how much of that trickles down to our little domain called Lamar's, but I would hope that we could allocate some of the new money and expedite the work we want to do. Now, that's all a mouthful. A lot of it is speculation. A lot of it's on the bank that uh, a trillion, some of the trillion will come down to Lamar's. But when uh, the last time this happened was Obama, um, and he allocated some funds, I don't recall the exact figure, um, some of which came down through the Federal Transportation, Highway Transportation, and uh, John can quote this as well as I, he sits on policy, I sit on TAC uh, down in Sioux City, and we were able, if you recall, to accelerate one of our programs because there was extra money. And John approved it, I approved it, the group approved it for us, and we implemented it. So in that breath, it is a little less lip service. It can happen that way, and I just want to set the stage. That's all I have. Any questions for <laughs> Scott? It's got tired all of a I, uh, I just want to share one thing, and that is that Scott and I was talking here a couple of weeks ago, and I said, you know, I said, we've... Uh, Thanks to the weather and everything, we've really accomplished a lot in this in this town. And he says, well, I think we broke a new record. He said, uh, uh, normally we have about 40 or 50 projects a year. And as you just heard, I think there's 87 projects that are, are completed or nearly completed. And I, I just want to uh, have everybody share with me. Let's give our administration people and our, and our people that work for us a real nine of applause. Another thing is, uh, uh, you can see after today uh, what our job is in 2017. So we're, we're off and running, and uh, uh, if uh, we can get Trump to give us a trillion dollars, why well, we'll, we'll keep right on moving. <laughs> okay, the next thing on the agenda is, uh, uh, the, uh, under general discussion, is uh, Citizen John, or Thumbs Up Award. My carrying on, my thumbs up as to what our administration got done last year. Uh, Clark? No. Uh, Steve? And all the workers that accomplished that work. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Rex? Well, I just want to say that I'm very blessed. Um, <clears throat> this completes 23 years sitting up here mm -hmm. as a councilman with a lot of council people, including lots of mayors. And they've all helped me. Uh, most, not all the citizens, helped me. I have to say that. But we have a great place, and we don't say it very often, but there's not a lot of places that you'd rather be than where we are. So thanks for all the help, and I do appreciate it. I might not say it out loud all the time, but 23 years I've been doing the best I could. So you're Merry, Christmas. On, Merry Christmas. You're you planning on resigning or anything, right? I didn't say that oh, either okay. way. <laughs> I, just saw that I, I just didn't say it either way. <laughs>
nothing but <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. I've been, yeah. I've been tromping some of the same ground that Rex has. It is enjoyable. Mm -hmm. but, you know, people say, why do you do it? And I, I, it's not like a hobby to me. I enjoy it. I'd rather be making the news than reading the news, especially with Clark. It's <laughs> 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 <Anyhow, laughs> been a great year, and uh, we all learn a little bit every yeah. time we meet here. Absolutely. Thank you. I guess the thing I look at is uh, I've always believed uh, in about three areas. One is uh, communication, which we try very hard to do with our citizens to keep them informed as to what's going on, such as happened today. The other big thing I think that has been very, very interesting to me is how uh, we all work together and call teamwork. And I think if we're going to continue to move down the road, uh, I hope we uh, continue to put the emphasis on our teamwork program. and. And uh, the reason I say that because if you look back, it looks like it's been pretty successful. So, yeah. thanks Amen. again. Okay, moving on. Uh, consent items. All items listed under the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There'll be no separate discussion on those items unless a request is made prior to the time the council votes on the motion. Today we have seven of them. Approval of December 6, 2016, regular meeting minutes. Number two is a list of the bills for the period ending 12-16-16. And number three is a monthly financial statement for November 2016. Number four is a renewal of the beer permit for the Pizza Hut. And number five is a commercial solid waste collection licenses. Number six is a 2017 Crescent Ridge paving project. And number seven is a business highway 75 overlay project. Does any of the council members have want to pull any of these before we vote on them? Uh, not to pull them, but the question, like uh, looking at solid waste, there is considerable more expenditure than revenue, and I assume that's <coughs> paying for a portion of the new street sweeper. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion to approve consent items one through seven. Is there a second? Second. Motion remain second to approve the consent items one through seven. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Moving on to the library uh, renovation. FEH has complete, completed the planning and study of the current library building. Members of the Friends of Limer's, Lamar's Public Library attended a special preview event at 4 o'clock on Monday, December 12, 2016. Said board approved and accepted the FEH proposal and requested it to be presented to the council. The mayor and the council were provided individual copies of the FEH study and proposal under a separate cover. The administration recommends council acknowledge, acknowledge receipt of the FEH study and proposal and establish January 17, 2017 as the date to consider said proposal allowing for community comments over the next month. However, not consider a public hearing as one is not legally required. The administration also requests the next month to determine and develop several applicable documents necessary to help with council consideration as follows. And there's nine of them. Number one, is project budget, in other words, value engineering. Number two is the funding operations, whether it be donations, grants, lost funds, general or departments. Number three is the funding raise, raising alternatives, which is donations, grants, or taxes. Number four is a financial performa, uh, which is sources and uses. Number five is a time schedule versus a library event scheduling. Number six is a project phasing, which includes a number of phases, whether it be partial or full closure. And number <coughs> seven is a construction management, which is a general contractor uh, versus a uh, construction manager. And number eight is a procurement process contractor purchase or direct city purchase. And number nine is the architectural 
and engineering contract proposal. The financial impact of this program today uh, is unknown at this time, but we do have the group from uh, the library here, and I'm going to turn it over to Shirley, uh, as she's the, uh, the head gal over there, as I understand it. Uh, so Shirley, it's all yours. Sometimes referred to as the library director, but I guess head gal can work I too. Can, I couldn't think that's of that. Fine, that's fine. That's fine. Six months ago, the library board and I brought forward a plan to hire a building consulting or architect to conduct a renovation study for the current library space. And during that time, city staff, library staff, trustees, and other stakeholders have been working and meeting with the arch architects from FEH in Sioux City. In my opinion, FEH has met and in many cases exceeded the criteria laid out by the RFP issued in July. They developed a detailed space plan for the most efficient utilization and modernization of the current library facility. They have looked at the existing structure. They proposed several ways that it could be an enhanced with the current, po current footprint. The library board has discussed various options and has re recommended the version that's in front of you today. Um, we believe it will meet, meet the immediate needs and keep future options open. And with that, I'm going to uh, hand it over to the representatives from FEH who have a really good reputation in libraries uh, across the state, and we're thrilled to work with them. Thank you. I'm Toy Sullivan with FEH Design. Um, we've got three electronic images that we can show you of, of what we've come up with through this process. Um, we, as Shirley mentioned, we've been meeting with the library task force, we've been meeting with the library staff, we've been on site taking a look at the facility that you have, um, and then just brainstormed and came up with some ideas on how we can improve upon what you have, whether it's within the footprint or whether uh, we also looked at addition possibilities, what sizes of additions would need to be, if that was an option. Um, we also looked at an ideal size for the Le city of Lamar's for a library and what that would be. Um, we've considered what you could do today within your footprint to alleviate some of the immediate needs and then looking forward to the future what the next steps would be for the for the facility. Did you guys have any questions as you went through the study? Questions at this time? Have yeah, we expanded all of the design fees in the original RFP? Yes. We've, what was that figure? We've gone way over, to be completely honest, but that's okay. That's, you know, as Shirley mentioned, we, uh, as we work with libraries across the region, um, it is really something that's a passion for our firm. So we get in, to jump into it, you know, mm -hmm. beat first and, and uh, go that's all the way the with these, with studies, with working yeah, with library. Right, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we can take a look at the three images if you like. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. The first one that you'll see is, is essentially showing um, an analysis of the collections and the areas that you have in the, in the library today. And it's all color coded. And as we look at the uh, final consideration of what the plan would be, to meet immediate needs, it's, we've used the same color code. So when you look at the plan, if you see a pale yellow, that's the adult collection. Um, the pale green is the children's collection. So just kind of give you an idea of how those areas would change and move in within the building. Before they get into that, uh, the <coughs> young lady that is putting that up on the computer is uh, Brittany uh, Reba. Ruba. Ruba, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, she is a first cousin of mine and uh, local uh, grown mm -hmm. and lives locally. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Mar Mars. Partial good and partial not. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the big things that, um, as we looked at this floor plan and started to lay out, uh, this is what you have today. And um, the thing that became the most obvious to us as we were visiting the building and as we were um, looking at the areas that you have needs in, the areas that you have needs is a children's space. Uh, the children's space is really too small to be usable for, um, you know, parents and adults to come and read to kids, to have a lot of program activities and such like that. And as we started looking at this, it, it kind of was interesting that um, you have a really large space within the building that's not used on a regular basis, and that's the meeting room. It's not used on a daily basis, I should correct myself. 
It is used, but it's not used to its full potential. So what, in our meetings with the group, we talked about um, that the meeting space sits vacant for a lot of the day. Could that be used for a better purpose? And um, just kind of general consensus was that perhaps today, simply to meet the more immediate needs, that meeting room goes away and it becomes the children's space. We also heard that the reading room up in the front uh, corner, that Glaston area, is one of the most popular spaces in the building. We heard from many, many people that it's wonderful, it's light-filled, it's a nice space to read, so don't get rid of it, basically. And then in the configuration of the space, with the shelves all being at that 45 diagonal, um, just by rotating those to more of a 90 degree on a grid, um, <coughs> gives you a lot better space circulation within the library. So then let's maybe take a look real quick. This is where the idea then is to, we're doing a very small addition on the east side of the building of a vestibule. And what this does is this allows us to take the canopy off on the north, <coughs> reconfigure that vestibule there, and you've got a new entrance on the side of the building. Most of your parking is on that east side of the building. So it really makes sense to have parking there, people come right in the building. Uh, we've got the light blue there, then to the left of the entry is the staff area, so the reception, <coughs> the circulation desk greets you right there. Computer is on the other side of it. The reading room is left in the top right corner, that remains the same basically. And what we've done is we've taken the children's area out of uh, the east side of the building and put it back in that meeting room and opened the meeting room up a little bit to the rest of the library. We're not planning on taking out that entire wall, just cutting a few openings in that to save some money there. And then reconfigure of the uh, young adult space, the adult space, the uh, <coughs> electronic collections, the DVD circulation, and then the history area is up in the, uh, the darker blue up in that corner. So what this does is this meets some of the immediate needs. It gets you a larger space for children's uh, collection and for children's activities and programming on a regular basis. The staff space moves, but it doesn't increase in size at all. The adult collection is rearranged. The reading space stays the same. The uh, computers are moved, so they're closer to the circulation desk. That stays about the same size. And then we've, we've uh, created a smaller meeting room up in what is the staff room, staff area right now. So it is smaller than the meeting room that you have, but it will still accommodate most of the larger meetings that you have happen at the library. So really, we're going to do a little bit to the exterior. We're going to add a few windows around the building and the small addition of the vestibule on the east, take the canopy off at the old vestibule. And on the exterior, that's about it. Everything else is going to happen on the inside. Any questions? You said the study said you're going to add a unisex Bathroom. We're not showing that we would add one here. Um, that would, there are just a couple of dimensional issues, uh, widths and stuff in the restrooms that are there now. They're minor. They can be adjusted. But if you didn't want to make those adjustments in there, an easy way to solve that would be to add a unisex restroom that was completely ADA and then you wouldn't have to worry about the paper towel dispensers and such being at the, regular, the right height. Overall, how, many, how much additional square feet are you looking at to operate in? So what this does, um, as far as the addition, the addition is a couple hundred square feet. It's very small. Um, 260. Yeah, 260. The, how much? 260? 260. That's the addition. Um, within the, the footprint of the building, though, we, we've increased the collection size, the seating spaces, on average, by about 23%. And we've done that changing the size of the shelves, uh, like I said, reconfiguring the adults so it's on a an, on an, uh, 90 degree or instead of the 45. Um, but we've increased both the seating space and the collection size by about 23% on average. Some of the collections don't increase. I believe the history collection doesn't really increase. Um, but most of it does increase about 23%. What was the size of that conference room that you converted to children's area? The size of the one that we converted? Yeah, in the lower. 
So that, has, that is a space that uh, seats about 75 people today. Right, uh, but as, as adding, but if we don't use it for a conference room, we use it for children's mm -hmm. area, we're picking up how much square footage is in for children. I apologize, off the top of my head, I don't remember the square foot of that room specifically. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah, about 200 square feet is the increase in that. I just had to turn the page. Mm -hmm. The, the um, new configuration would mean the meeting room would seat about 30 people. Um, so that is, that is indeed a trade-off. The major vast majority of our meetings are under are 30 and under. Mm -hmm. Once a month we have something there where we have kids um, that we have more than 30 children. But we feel with that we can reconfigure children's space. We're looking at shelving that may be on casters and we can host that event or mm -hmm. other similar things in that mm -hmm. reconfigured space to make it more flexible instead of just having it available for that once a month mm -hmm. event. And in the large meeting space right now, what we're showing is really a lot of open space, a lot of reading space, um, the play area, um, more so than shelving in that meeting area. But again, we would put the shelving that is there, make it movable, so a lot of that can be moved out of the way for a larger program. I'm sure you said it, but what is the dark blue on the... Yes. The dark blue within the room is your uh, microfilm collection and the equipment for that. And then as it extends out into the library itself is the history collection. And that's local history <coughs> genealogy information. The kind of on that screen kind of teal blue in the center is a large print collection. And that was something that we noticed right now when somebody walks in the vestibule, the large print collection is way back in the farthest corner from the front door. So this seemed to be something that would serve the population a lot better if you had it near the front door um, and near the reading space as well. The yellow throughout the space, the lighter yellow is the adult collection space. The darker yellow is the adult seating area and reading area. The purples, the lighter tone purple is the young adult uh, seating area with the darker being the media. And then the real pale purple is the young adult uh, collection. And as I mentioned before, the light green is the children's collection, the darker green is the children's seating. And then we have taken the current vestibule today and split it into two study rooms. And that's, a, that's something that you don't have in the building at all today. There aren't any private uh, meeting study rooms where say a tutor can <coughs> sit with a student or a student can study on their own in a small private space. So we've created two study rooms in that space right now. Where the current canopy is now, is there going to be parking there or is that all going to be landscaping? Well, we didn't really have an uh, in-depth conversation with the group on that. So for now, we're taking the canopy off simply, and we've had a little bit of conversation that perhaps um, that's a conversation with the city that maybe we turn it into parking or it becomes a, a park space. We haven't really had much in-depth conversation with the group on that. Okay. But yes, it could. There's room there that um, we could probably add three to four parking spots in that space. It's Will the canopy come down? Part of the nine yes. items yes. Rex, that we yes. want to evaluate and bring back to you. Yeah, because with the parking lot this way, yep. there still isn't a ton of parking <coughs> spots. It's, right. it's a, a dozen, <coughs> maybe 15 or something like that, but you throw a couple handicapped ones in there and you might only get 10. Yep. Right. And I don't want them parking on the other side on, uh, let's say, Langles Electric West. or, or West. the... Eagle side. West. Yeah. <coughs> I don't want to go on the west side and have to walk all the way around the building just to get in the door. Well, the thing I know is about parking, there's three entrances into the parking. Right. If we could mm -hmm. cut that down to two entrances, even if we have to change ground level to accomplish that, it would. I agree with you, Ken. Yeah, that, would, that is kind of a lot of wasted space. Yeah. So taking the canopy off cosmetically, you'd bring um, that area 
which is also closing in the doors right now. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to call the north side, taking the canopy off. Um, does the, would the costs include cosmetically bringing that all together? Or yep. Yep. Basically, from, from the west side of the canopy around to where the vestibule addition happens, we've got some costs in there for fixing up that whole piece. And then painting the rest of it. Yes. I think you'd gain at least a minimum of a half a dozen spaces once you rip that canopy off. And I mean, I can't believe you don't need quite a few. Yeah, Unless I we get rid of the funeral home look. So, and, and if you get rid of one of the entrances to the it's true. parking lot, right. absolutely. Right. And, and in this proposal, we're looking at taking the handicapped spots that are all the way down at the northwest corner of the building now and moving them up <coughs> to be within the triangular portion of parking lot. So they're right next to the front door. I like the idea that you're bringing light in on the west side, the eagle side, of course. But mm -hmm. um, does that severely hamper shelf space? Not. Are you keeping the lights up high? We're so putting the windows up high, so they'd be above the shelf space okay. on that west okay. side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really, you know, like I mentioned, we heard from so many people that the nice seating area to sit in front of a window is in your current reading room that you have there now. So we've maintained that. And then by having the collection on the west side mostly, it still gives you the natural light to have windows up sure. above, but you don't need the window right next to a chair there. Sure. What does, um, I know there was a study done 20 years ago, 15 years ago, that a community our size uh, requires 24,000 square feet library. So you, yep. There had been a study done in Lamar's for your library, and that study said it was about 23 and a half, 24,000 square feet is what you needed. Okay. And what we looked at, we came up with just under about 20,000 in order to get you to be at a six volume per capita, which is about where your peer libraries are at for communities of this size okay. in your region. With all the internet stuff, with all the school libraries, with all the college libraries and everything like that, mm -hmm. is that a real number? I mean, real number? I, I would say yes. I mean, the, the libraries that we work with today, libraries are, yes, they're changing. With all of the internet and the, you know, the e-books and everything, yes, they're changing. And they're changing how their delivery methods happen. But you still have a large population that wants that book okay. to sit down and read. And libraries are also looking at new ways, new services, new programs to provide. So we're seeing a lot of um, unique programs in libraries that you never saw 20, 30 years okay. ago. So what is the footprint of this proposal? The footprint is basically the size that you have now, which is about 7,600 7, square feet, adding a 260 square foot addition. So, so 8,000? Just under. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will, um, if we were to do this as proposed, mm -hmm. what's it going to do to personnel, surely? What's it going to do to personnel? Current budget <coughs> personnel, the staffing you have, is that going to handle? Um, well, I'll be coming to you in about a month with a budget where I would like to see us add some staff because we have been down over the years. So in, I'm going to come with that whether you give, we do this or not. Right, okay. But, but I don't see at this point that we would have significant change because we have still one service desk. We don't have two floors. Um, there's a lot of efficiency in how the staff area is situated. Um, one of those offices you can see overlooks the children's department. We can see, you know, we won't be able to see into every nook and cranny, but we will have a good vantage sites. Um, again, that one service desk cuts down on your staff um, input there. And, you know, what I would like to see is that it looks wonderful and it's inviting. And, oh, my gosh, people are coming like you wouldn't believe. And then we'd have to take a look at right. what, what impact right. that would have. Um, there, there's always some automation um, initiatives that could be taken place, too. Um, that can cut down on some staff amount. That was my last question, and then I'll be quiet, was be when you take away the angle of the original footprint, which uh, I'll, I like your new design, but when you take away the angle, much like in retail, your your monitors can't be looking down all the, all the, the viewpoints for vandalism, theft, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So 
But I'm assuming that a few monitoring cameras could take care of that too. Right. Uh, they have done a good job at putting that children's air, that children's desk, so that there'll be windows to look through over to that side. Um, also, the DVDs, computers, places that we need a, a fair amount of supervision are within easy reach. Sure. Um, so, yeah, we, okay. we're happy with that. Yeah. And then the study rooms, too, that are moved so that we can, from the desk, we can have some, some vision of those two study rooms, too, and keep an eye on those. Do you have people request, um, like, t testing areas where you're the monitor? We do the proctor uh, for professional licensing exams and stuff right. like that. We proctor tests every month, and that's one of the new statistics I've been pulling is how many tests we proctor. I think it was July or August we actually did 15. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. But on a normal month it might be five or six. Sure. And we have distance ed students who are looking for a place to sit with their laptop and listen to those online lectures or take those online sure. courses. Okay. And that's what's in mind here. I see that. Okay. These are all great questions. Um, is there anything more that you would like us to answer or consider? Looks good. Not for me right now. We do have we do have if you'd like to see. We've got one uh, rendering that we did of what the exterior could look like, and that's what we've got up here. Oh, okay. So. We've basically taken the canopy off on the north and then at the top of the reading area and just taken the kind of stucco material that's on it now, taken that off, left the structure that's there and just put a new material over the facade of that and then kind of mimic the same look at the uh, vestibule addition. One of the reasons I had asked is where we're at as far as dollars expended on the proposal. Uh, do we think it would be, a, I would think it would be a good idea to have at least one night open meeting where we can invite the public just to discuss it. Okay. Discuss the layout. I, I, that's my opinion. I don't know what the rest of the people feel here, but it would be nice to have a place where people can, can listen to you guys, mm -hmm. explain what you got here, and, and if they've got okay. questions or if they, they mm -hmm. you know, support, it would be good to hear. Mm -hmm. We'd be open to that. Mm -hmm. That should be done before January 17th. Exactly. <coughs> but after Christmas. First week of January, second week of January. I agree. Yeah. But it looks good. Or throw yes. it throw it in before fine. our budget meeting. Or after our but no, I'm serious that we have our one workshop night and we're here. Throw it in there. If you want to have that kind of a evening meeting. Let's just see it. Because I think we have a four to seven one time. Yeah, well, let's just see if there's some other time where people could just come and maybe ask less formally. Oh, okay. Than our budget yeah, time time. That's fine. That's fine. That's you fine. want a formal presentation if they had questions? Just yeah, just to come and ask questions. Because it may give you an idea what to do about landscaping or something, too, that you haven't thought about. But otherwise, it looks good. It's a nice, awful nice book. You guys put Good. together a nice yes. proposal. I got to well done. Yeah. I want to publicly uh, tell the council that I think Brittany and Toy have done a remarkable job. Absolutely. And uh, I, can, I can somewhat verify they've spent way more time than what we deserve to get from them. So thank you. Uh, and I think you guys have done a fabulous job. Good. Thank you. It was our pleasure. Do you have any other questions for us? <coughs> you know, um, I think just as you go through this, if there's anything else you need from us, feel free to ask. Um, more, more than willing to continue and help with this process. It's very exciting. Well, I know over the last month and a half, three months, I've heard the word phase. Do we mm -hmm. want to do we want to talk about phase at all, or do we not want to talk about phase? If That's I could, a if I could ask you, Clark, to hold that thought until uh, the 17th. Okay. Um, the nine items that are in your agenda. But our first meeting with uh, with Shirley and, and uh, FEH will be tomorrow afternoon to go through the nine items and uh, kind of build the whole data package for you guys. Uh, one of those is the phasing of the project. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah.
And then, and then they're coming. You're coming back to us. Is it on the 17th? On the 17th. <laughs> with the, with these nine answers, or we'll have uh, answers for all nine of those. And, is that the plan? Uh, and uh, and vial that to you to help you make the decision on what to do here. Okay. Good enough. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas to you all. I make a motion acknowledging receipt of the FEH study and proposal for the current library building and establish in January 17, 2017 as a date for city cons for council consideration of said proposal, directing staff to arrange an open meeting with the public prior to January 17th and to furnish all applicable documents necessary. Is there a second? Second. Oh, move. Motion made and second, acknowledge and receipt of the FEH study and proposal for the current library bud building and establishing January 17, 2017 as the date of consul council consideration of said proposal. Uh, also directing uh, the uh, uh, opportunity to have a meeting prior to that in regard to uh, an open meeting, is that right, John? Yes. For anybody who has any questions uh, or concerns or, or comments, uh, and furnish all applicable documents necessary. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very kindly, everybody, for coming today and, uh, and keeping us informed. Okay, moving on. I suppose if there's anybody that wants to become a member of the Friends of the Library, they'll take some new membership too, right? You do. Okay, I just wanted to. And yeah. It's a tax deduction? Yeah. So it's a 501c3. You, you understand what that means? You can write it off on your taxes and yeah. possibly save up to 45%. Come on. Get your checkbook out. And you've got a great <laughs> opportunity to be part of this project. Right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Don't want, to Thank you. don't want to miss an opportunity. No. <laughs> Good point, Rex. Thank okay, you. moving on to um, uh, discussion. Uh, John? Nothing. Um, Clark? No. Steve? No. Rex? No, sir. Kenny? Just mention one thing because of Christmas. The recycling styrofoam is not a recyclable item, I believe. Correct. Just to make public aware of that <clears throat> because everybody gets things on that styrofoam when they just assume it can be recycled. Mm -hmm. should, Good go point. In, should go in if your garbage and not <coughs> recyclable. Good point. Thank, thank you, Ken. I think glass is now out of the place. There's no. a place for glass? Or can I've, not, I've not been informed that the glass has changed. Uh, they're still collecting little glass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, shrink wrap and uh, the real light fluffy stuff like the Walmart bags and high yeah. bags. Throw that in your garbage. Yeah. There's absolutely no market for that real fluffy stuff. I guess maybe it's more yeah. being careful if you do glass. Just don't throw it in there and break it all off. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay, moving on to uh, City <laughs> Administrator Scott, uh, the 2016. Uh, Mayor, uh, do you want to discuss these assignments? I still noticed that was listed on the Council Mayor. I think he was just oh, making okay. assume that that yeah. wasn't a discussionable item. So I, I have <laughs> my recommendation that they all stay the same. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, we don't need a motion. Okay. Unless there's anybody that wants to raise a flag on that. Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me? Hello. Hello. You're talking. Hello. Hello. You're looking at me. Hello. You look at me. <laughs> You're the only one with a red face, so. so I'll jump into the list of fees. Uh, what you have before you is coming uh, from uh, department heads to you, uh, that which is in the red. Uh, not all are suggesting uh, increases. Uh, I would throw out a notion, again, this isn't an action item. So we will have it on your first council meeting in January. <clears throat> um, I would propose to you that we <clears throat> leave all fees the same, contrary to your departments, with the exception of uh, two. And uh, if you flip over to the latter pages under uh, water and wastewater, I believe that the uh, finance committee of the past, I can't quote the exact month that they met, but we met and said to one another, as well as the utility uh, committee, that we need to increase 
uh, probably do a three-year systematic increase in water rates and sewer rates. So I'm going to propose to you that we increase water rates and sewer rates by approximately 3% each year, three consecutive years, um, 2017, 2018, and 2019. <clears throat> the last, well, two times ago, you did a three-year increase after the study that McClure did for us, and we increased rates in uh, 2000, 2001, and 2002. And then last time we did a three-year was 2012, 2013, and 2014. So I'm proposing a 3% increase in um, the sewer use fee and the sewer minimum monthly, and in the uh, four brackets of water rates, and including the minimum bill. And uh, the reason I say approximate, we would do the uh, math, but then round it off <coughs> to a whole, uh, even whole number. Closest, uh, Nick. Now I did that, but I won't bore you with the numbers. I will furnish that to you prior to the next meeting so you've got it ahead of time and then we'll put it on the council agenda for the next time. Hmm. Uh, I'm certainly not opposed to it, but what, what is the justification for increasing, Scott? Uh, I think we need to increase because of uh, the increased costs we're experiencing on materials and labor and construction costs uh, to keep pace with that. Um, we uh, hired additional people at your water. We're now uh, getting to fully understand the operations of the, the uh, brand new wastewater plant. And uh, there's a lot of high costs there and uh, Ron's uh, laid up right now after a surgery, but uh, he would tell you that uh, the, the old gal, quote unquote, the old gal is getting old. And uh, it probably didn't sound real good. <laughs> <laughs> really He's talking it. about the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, you know, it got its started in 1958, and we've increased it every seven years on the average since 1958. So there's components that still are of the 1958 vintage, 1967 vintage, 1976 vintage, 1980-something vintage, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, those components are wearing out. So he's got VFDs, he's got motors, he's got pumps, he's got blowers, and they're expensive items. It's nothing for us to spend uh, five figures, well into the five figures, just for one of those components when part. it goes bad. For a part. Plus state regulations are not getting any simpler. Uh, thank you, John. Man, we haven't even talked about the cost of replacing old water mains. Uh, and thank you, sewer. Ken. <coughs> And we've got a collection system on the sewer system that uh, dates back to 1892. We've got a water system that dates back to the early 1900s, some of which um, you made strides this past year, 2016. You'll make more strides in 2017 on the list I already gave you. But there's a lot of four-inch mains out there. Four-inch mains back in 1900. That was the going thing. Today, it's obsolete. You can't feed a fire hydrant based on a four inch main. Right. It, it doesn't meet any one of the three codes. <coughs> AWWA, 10 state standards, and DNR. And it's in danger of It doesn't meet collapsing. any of them. What? And it's in danger of collapsing when you do. Well, and then they're old, and the four inch should look like this. Right. It You're looks like that. Because right. yeah. of the incrustation. So there's a lot of needs in the system. There's a lot of O and M, and I just think to keep pace with it, guys, I think we need to. When we brought the TIF report to you last month, uh, the Finance Committee, Ken and uh, I mean uh, John and uh, Rex, uh, indicated to you what we were doing there. We hope to lower taxes, and I don't mean to compensate for that. 
but maybe it's a good time. Let's lower taxes because of TIF. Let's add some user fees because of obsolescence. And stop, when, when McClure did that water study, water rate study early in 2000, in the 2000s, remember they, they proposed and said we should have a five year consecutive increase and we cut it back to three. We, uh, thank you, John. Absolutely true statement. And we didn't do it to what they wanted either. No, we didn't go, we, we didn't go as high as we we, we we wouldn't go as high as they wanted. So if we'd have gone as high, we'd be even higher yeah. than what we're proposing after <coughs> three years. The, 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 also, the thing to note is a lot of the water system issues have been available to be covered in the TIF district since the well since the South Ice Cream plant, the Lamar's TIF is going away. We won't have that opportunity to use that money in the TIF district again. It'll have to be used by user fees. Yeah, we are using TIF dollars instead of uh, yeah. uh, revenue fund dollars. And I think when we start replacing mains and sewers, we have to take into effect what we learned on the highway this summer, that there's a ton of things down in that ground. The cost of redoing that is going to be more expensive and take longer than what we anticipated. It's not just a matter of digging a trench and dropping a pipe. These are all good points. And I think the other thing, too, is uh, I haven't seen it for a while, but we're, we're the cheapest in the area for trash, um, <laughs> water, sewer. Pretty, pretty significantly the cheapest. Across the board, I think we're the mm -hmm. cheapest um, mm -hmm. taxation. Yep. So, I mean, I just like to know that stuff so that when you get jumped about it, you know, I, I'm, I'm not opposed at all to raising the rates. I'm, period, not opposed at all. Um, are we talking about these, or are we just, what are we? This is just discussion. Okay. Uh, we need to, you need to vote on it come January 3rd. Well, are you going to go through a whole ordinance uh, those, on the water? Thank you. Those rates for sewer and water are ordinance-based, so you're going to have to go through uh, three readings. Okay, okay. But we get it started on January 3rd. Right. Okay. And it'll take three, three council meetings. I like the idea of, of, of planning ahead on a three-year program rather than to just continue to hold where we're at and then about four or five or six years from now we got to <coughs> jump at eight or ten percent rather than three at a crack yeah. I mean it just it just it's a lot more comfortable and maybe yeah. maybe some of that federal money will come down too and help us mm -hmm. I like the optimism yeah. mm -hmm. I agree yeah. yeah but there's supposed to also be a relaxation of the regulations too well, that's all along with tax rates. <laughs> that, that, yeah. So there's just all kinds of hats. I, I just spoke. The, the only one in the department list that has some red that we probably need to follow through, although I need to visit with uh, uh, Bill Rosacker, is ambulance. Uh, he's got a number of other meds and whatnot, and he's, so I might have misspoke relative he's, to ambulance. He's got to have those in the agreement. Yeah, I think so. To be able to bill for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right now he doesn't have them in. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? No. Uh, moving on to the assistant, city administrator. Um, Jason. Yeah, with the preparation I laid in front of you, with the preparation of the budget every year comes the multitude of committee meetings to go through those uh, department budgets. So at some point, um, in, according to this sheet, we're, you see some of those deadlines that were coming up against so um, hopefully sometime the rest of this week and uh, at some point next week we come up with times that is accommodating to each of those committees so I might be sending out emails just to find out what your schedules are and when you can meet because um, that first uh, January 17th meeting will be the first time we try to get a, a budget to you so I like Bill's method. Just go ahead and put dates in there and let us say that it won't work. Rather that. than us try to all throw in a date and try to. I really do like it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, because otherwise you, mm -hmm. you get a lot less work that way. If you just shoot us a time and a date and <coughs> okay. we'll make it work. We, we make it work. Pick we your, adjust our pick schedule. Pick your 10-day period or whatever you need. And What's we'll that, work. Bev? No whispering. What did you say? <laughs> I got about five. I got about five days in January. That would not work for me. I'd like to look like the 10th or this 
You want to do it long, better? As long as these guys give us give us some numbers, or we, yeah. we, they, we can't walk in on the tenth and then get the book. Come right. on, you got to give it to us ahead of that. Yeah, can you if if we do Beverly? <laughs> After W two. Yeah. After W two. Tenth, can you have stuff done by the tenth? I guess that's the question I ask. Okay. If not, we'll work around it. Um, I, I, I think that's what the I reason think. I ask if we were discussing fees is because if we just get a list in a month and a half and say, here are the fees, do we okay them? Um, is there any way we can really offer an aggressive incentive for first-time golf memberships? They have a we have they are right now. Program. Where is it? Uh, is there a new one? No, there was a number of people that signed up for. Oh, well, I know that, but I mean, I'm talking. But that actually went back, I mean, it, it saved people, but it also went back to the person that signed them up, right? Uh, I think there was an incentive program of $50 for if you brought uh, right. oh, Susie okay. Smith over there to right. get a membership, and she got a membership, you got 50 Right, right. Okay. Yep. And and I just, just to follow through on that, Clark, I did visit with Julie and, and Brian and those people uh, just this week, and that program last year really worked. Okay, good. I'm just saying, can, yeah. we, can we enhance we, we, it? We brought new new ones in, and 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 they, so it, it was it was very successful. There's an exclusion now for council people, right? Yeah. Because we had one guy take advantage of it, if I remember right. Was that the mayor? No, I think that's Mr. Wick. <laughs> I'm not sure that you paid. Did you pay any time? The, the only advantage I got is that I paid her my dues early. <laughs> It's the last mayor of the year. We pick on everybody. Is that answer? Already in rough year. No, no, no. We'll, right. we'll yeah. figure out a schedule in here, and then I'll, we'll send, send out times. And okay. Cut. Anything else, Jason? No. All righty. Uh, let's move on. At this time, we're going to be going into closed session. And so, as for the roll call. I'd make a motion to enter closed session under Iowa Code Section 21.51J, whether the closure of the discussion of the purchase of sale of real estate would be the disadvantage of the city. Second. Motion made and second. Uh, I gotta find my. Here we go. Motion made and second to enter closed session under Iowa Code Section 21.5. Uh, is that 1J or 1C? J. J. 